to episode two of the Welsh Cricket Sofa. Um, it's been a couple of months since our, our last one and it's great to see um, a good amount of engagement on, on episode one online, which is, which is fantastic. Um, episode two, we're in a slightly different location this time. We, we find ourselves in the, in the wonderful Cardiff Castle. Um, and our thanks go to, to one of our own, one of our own umpires, John Fernand, for, for helping us sort this one out. So it's great to be here. Um, a bit of a cool venue to be, to be doing this episode in and, and we will get into some stuff um, as we go. Um, we thought we'd kind of start, before I introduce the two guys either side of me, we thought we'd start this episode, obviously the season's getting closer. Um, you know, people are starting to look ahead towards the start of the season. So um, we wanted to kind of bring two different perspectives um, to the table. So um, on my right, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Ryan Ainsworth, captain of club captain and first team captain of Mumbles, um, and on my left, Bob Spatz, um, who is not only one of our Premier League umpires in South Wales Prem, um, but is also ACO appointee, uh, in amongst lots of other different roles. Um, so, delighted to welcome you both tonight, and, and we'll just kind of, yeah, as I say, kind of get into a lot of the, the little different things that from a player's perspective, from an umpire's perspective, and as, as I say, as we start to kind of get get ready for the season, we'll, we'll unpack a few things there and then. But before we kind of do that, gents, what's, what's kind of the winter look like for both of you? What does is, what is, what is a typical winter for an umpire look like? What, what do you guys tend to do? Generally, from once the season finishes, mid-September till December, maybe a couple of meetings, um, not a lot. But then once Christmas is out of the way, introduced into January, we have regular meetings on the laws, any new laws that have come in, uh, go through them, any new members, get them up to speed generally. Uh, the AGM is normally in January. Um, and then once you, know, you come to March, April, appointments get set out and things of that nature from my perspective, yeah. and it starts to get busy. Yeah, and some of the guys have been away, umpires tend to do some bits in the winter, we've had a few go go yeah. the season, mainly yeah. to we've do got, some... Um, four umpires next week going up to South Africa for the OF50s World Cup. That's it, yeah. Uh, Paul Evans, Mark, Mark Jenkins, Martin Weir and Steve Davis, they all gone up there, from, congratulations to them for that. Uh, I think Paul has done some umpire in, in New Zealand as well, in, mm -hmm. before Christmas. Um, but yeah, they, they're keeping active. They should come back fit and firing and, mm -hmm. and ready to go for Possibly. through a cold, Possibly. cold April in Wales. <laughs> Fab, Ryan, for club captain, what what is a what does winter look like for you? Well, I think it's pretty much more involved. It's still, it's still cricket, but I think pretty much all, all all year round for us. I think being club captain, I think also having a young family within the club, I'm heavily involved in the junior side too. So we do quite a lot of junior cricket within through the winter, um, and also I'm involved in regional cricket. So pretty much cricket for me is all year around in some aspects but from a club point of view I say I'm quite heavily involved having young kids that play in our junior section um, heavily involved in, in the running of the junior section really yeah. um, trying to put things in place plans in place for that really so don't switch off from cricket I think um, from a senior point of view you don't tend to hear from anybody so probably yeah first week of April if you're lucky sometimes uh, <laughs> but um, we, we again a lot of students and people like that they away people have obviously work and stuff going on through the winter but you don't seem to hear from anyone really through the winter until, as I say, it comes sort of March time. We start planning pre-season things like that. If yeah. you're lucky, so recruiting, recruit, trying to do all trying to do stuff. some recruiting. Yeah, yeah. recruiting is, I suppose, a big thing for us. You know, yeah, trying to get players in again. There's loads of links with universities and stuff, which is great. You know, people looking to play the club cricket, and especially the first half of the season. Um, and also the way things are sometimes, just trying to maybe retain players in, in some way. Yeah. Um, and keep them folks, but. But yeah, from a, it's, it's, it's trying to get them, get everyone together. It's quite difficult with work and commitments like that, and university and people. A lot of the players away in different universities all over the country. It's uh, it's quite a difficult one to try and get everyone together until sort of come March time, really. But yeah, yeah it's pretty much cricket for me all yeah all through all through the year, really. And what and what is it that you guys look? What do you look forward to most? Obviously, players look maybe look forward to the season. Yeah. In, you know, in lots of different ways. What would, uh, would you guys look forward to most? As a S start? Similar type of thing, get, get a few friendlies under your belt if you possibly can. Um, once you've got a little bit of a taste back, then you're looking forward to the league season. And then once the league season kicks in, then you've got your Welsh Cups, your Bucks games, your junior games. So the, f the first month in May is really busy from an umpire's point of view because you've got all the rounds of the Welsh Cup, the early Bucks games, the leagues. And, it is quite busy, and then once you've got May out of the way, you're really up and running then for the rest of the season. It goes. And in the same way as a player, as you say, it's kind of important to get 
get a few games under your belt before maybe some of the yeah. some of the proper stuff starts. Yeah, yeah. In, in all fairness, the clubs come to myself and ask for umpires. Um, you try and share them out to make sure everybody gets a game or maybe two, yeah. depending where they're going to be starting the season off. Um, and yeah, it's worked pretty well the last couple of years, and I can't see it being any different this season. Yeah, nice. It's pretty good. Anything you yeah, just, in particular? Yeah. For me, listen, as a for personally, I just can't wait for the first game to start. And I appreciate friendlies, and you've got it's got to be done. But um, once you start the first game, I quite enjoy the competitiveness of it. That, that's what I enjoy about it. And I think uh, yeah, I just can't wait to get the first game up and running. And from a club point of view too, and it's great. As soon as the first game starts, it's a different, it's a different vibe at the club, you know, through the, even the weeknights where there's junior games on at the club and again having a young family, we spend most of our life at the club through, through the summer, so we, the kids can't wait for them, for, they keep asking when's the first game start because they know it's time, they love it up there, so I think from a well, club point of view, people just can't wait, people just seem generally happier, I suppose it's summertime and um, the nights are sort of lighter and there's more you can do really with it, so I think yeah, and from a player's perspective, I think for me, well, for me personally, it's just get that first game. I can't wait for the first game of the season, and you're into it then. Um, yeah, so just look forward to it. I really look forward to that, really. Superb. Yeah, it soon comes around. It yeah. does, it does. Um, let's dive into some of the, the nuts and bolts of, of some of the, the, the things we wanted to kind of talk about. So, Ryan, I'll start with you because I was going to ask Bob this first, <laughs> but it's interesting to get the player's perspective of, of umpires and likewise umpires yeah. and of players. but. What makes, a, what makes a good umpire, in, from a player's perspective, what, what makes a good umpire in your view? Um, I think, for, for me, per, again, it's from my personal experience as a captain and playing the leagues over so many years, it's, it's just having that relationship, really. I think it's, it's really important. I think even it's before the game, after the game, I think that has a lot to say Then it does help to, to get you through the game, manage the game, if you've got those relationships there. Um, I'm not saying we become best mates with umpires, I'm just saying, it is a, you know you can have prior to the game have the chat you know after the game it's important I think umpires players and umpires they've both got a part to play here but I think they are socialising after the game having that drink having a chat about the game just realising yeah, they are human beings we all do I mean mm. we all work all week and we come and give up our weekends and uh, we are, ideally it's a hobby at the end of the day come and enjoy it really I think that's the biggest thing for me, is trying to have that relationship with an umpire. And I, over the years, I've always said that, you know, you've got to have those relationships. It does make the actual managing of the game then, if you've got that relationship. It makes it a lot easier yeah, yeah. from a captain, and I'd imagine from an umpire's point of view too, you know, if you have those relationships. I think, again, players and players from, from other players might think a bit of consistency as when it comes to the actual umpiring side. Um, but that, that, that's, a, that's a difficult one. I, again, it's, yeah, it's human beings, well, aren't we? There's going to be mistakes, there's going to be errors. Again, so we, we might we probably touch base with it later, but the you know, umpire makes a mistake, I suppose, uh, all of a sudden then becomes a bad umpire, for example, where if you go out and play a reckless shot and you get out for a duck, does that make you a bad cricketer? Do you know what I mean? It's, uh, you're going to make mistakes, I think, along the way. But for me, yeah, as a captain, I like to think that good, have good relationships, yeah. really. It makes you a long day, you can spend most of the day together anyway, so it doesn't make them worthwhile in some nice way. Yeah. Anything you want to add to that? <laughs> I guess what Ryan is saying, if, if you've got an umpire-captain relationship, which is good, mm. you know you can go to a captain if you've got a problem or an issue and say, look, can you sort it out? And you know the captains you can go to and they will sort it out. Mm. There's one or two captains that are a bit reluctant to go and tell the player, you know, stop this or whatever, which makes it a bit more difficult, mm. which then we got to interact with it then. And I'd rather the captain do it than myself. Because if you don't listen to the captain, they deserve what they get, basically. But it's much better when it comes from the captain. Um, and yeah, there's captains in the circuit, we'll, we'll do it. Yeah. So there's no problem with that. Um, but generally, as long as the game is run properly, if it's man managed properly by both umpire and captain, then generally there are no, there are no problems really because both of, and your colleague as well, the three of us are on top of it, and, or yeah. four of us, including the other captain. No problems. Yeah. As long as yeah, it, it's a difficult one because again, I think it always comes from the captain. It does, and I think if you're going to be strong enough, then uh, again, you're in charge basically from that aspect. And I think they'll follow suit. The players will follow suit. But again, you some some teams you see it where the captain maybe not be as strong. The players seem to, and that's when it becomes difficult for the umpires then to sort of yeah. manage that game. Where if you've got that relationship and that strong captain, it's so much easier to manage the game. It's, it's often yeah. when the game's getting tight yeah. and it's that dicey situation that 
I'm trying to think of a player's point of view, there's yeah. not many instances where the game's gone and there's a massive issue. It's usually when the game's in the balance, temper or pressures are rising. Is that, is that type of how much from a captain's point of view is that ultimate result, winning the game, compared to do you actually have to take a step back and go, what's maybe what's right in the context of, of the general game, I guess, yeah. rather than rather than anything else, if that, if that the, the game sometimes can turn on one, when I say one ball, I mean one decision. Yeah. Whether we miss a nick behind, the players know the batter's nicked it, he doesn't walk, he gets a few verbals, yeah. then you're thinking, all right, I made a mistake there, as yeah. Ryan said, you, we do make mistakes. Yeah. We made a mistake there, but we go there and say, hang on lads, part of the game of cricket, we made a mistake, you make mistakes, let's get on with it. Mm-hmm. But then you tend to find after that, that underlying current is there, and it just ups the ante a little bit and it gets a little bit, oh hello, on our toes a little bit by you now because we made a mistake yeah. or because we give them the right decision, the players might think he's nicked it, it could have been the thigh pad or something, yeah. and the verbal start then. So, but one ball, you could have had the whole innings, the first innings, you could have 30 overs the second innings, not a problem, one ball, and the game changes on that. It, it's difficult, isn't it? Because the umpire is almost like, you're almost like the goalkeeper or the wicketkeeper in the sense that the striker could miss however many open goals, scores a winner, they're the hero, whereas the keeper, the goalkeeper, you make that one mistake, mistake. you do everything right, you make one mistake <coughs> you don't and commit. Yeah. You suddenly you know, the spotlight's on you. So how difficult is it to, and as we say, players make mistakes, umpires will make mistakes, but maybe you'll get a feeling that, oh, yeah, have I got that one wrong or, or whatever. How hard is it to put that out of your mind and then because you two balls later, you could have a decision that is perfectly well. That's you know, exactly so dead, or it's, yeah. there's a perfect nick, and yeah. we all know how hard that yeah. is to. Yeah. There's nothing worse from uh, my point of view. If I give a batsman out LBW, and then when I go to talk to my colleague, he'll say to me, <laughs> "You didn't you the nick and that, did you?" <laughs> no, obviously I didn't. You know, but then all right, you made a mistake. Yeah. You can't leave it get you because you, the next decision could be a mistake. You, I, I'll apologise at the end of the game. If I made a mistake, I'm the first to say, sorry, boys, just, yeah. you know, I made a mistake there. But the players apologise to us when they've, as Ryan said, yeah. plays a rash yeah, shot. Yeah, and yeah, no, no, they get on with it. But then on, on this sort of um, theme, another area where is you get a batter, he'll play a shot, he might get an inside edge, the finger goes up and he waves the bat at the umpire to say if it did. But then when he edges one behind, does he walk off the, the umpire's decision? Mm. Yeah. No. He'll stick around until the umpire gives him out. It works both ways. Yeah. Some will go for you and some won't. Just accept it, basically. Yeah. What's given. That kind of leads me on a little bit in terms of, I don't think we'll probably, the, the plan wasn't to get into kind of walking, <laughs> not to walk, I don't know, we might go there. But um, we've, we've, we've a little bit touched on it. That, that treading the line between spirit cricket, for want of a better word, and competitiveness and wanting to win, you know, look, it's, it's, it's club cricket, it's not, yeah. it's not the World Cup final, but everybody wants to win. How, right, from a captain's point of view, no doubt there's been times, whether you've been captain or you've been yeah. playing and you've, you know, your captain underneath you is, how, do you, how difficult is it to tread that line between maintaining and upholding spirit of cricket compared to, you know, it might be, you know, we've seen it in World Cups, we've seen batters collide with bowler and yeah. batter gets run out and then you know batter has to walk off the pitch and not really happy you know that how difficult is it as a captain to kind of put yourself in that position and make those calls i'm a little again it's probably a personal view of mine as a, as a captain i'm i'm for it i'm for the spirit of cricket and this is a decision which i think i will you know, I'll, I'll take on that responsibility and make that decision you know i think uh, Again, it's a difficult one because you could have, you could be, I don't know, again, winning by well what, 100, cruising to victory, and then all of a sudden it instantly happens, and you're sort of happy to let that one go by. And again, as soon as it gets a close game, all of a sudden, then that's when it's probably difficult. But again, personally, from my point of view, I think I'm saying spirit of cricket is vitally important, I think, um, especially again at club cricket. Mm-hmm. I think it's important that uh, captains again lead from the front with that, I think. And it's not just. From a club captain point of view, I'd like to think that the whole club as a whole, from the junior section, we, we're teaching them and they're coming through the lens of spirit like, of cricket, really. And I think it's uh, I think it's massive, a massive part to play, really. But again, it's different circumstances. You could get a tight game and it could be... I think like, that's really interesting what you yeah. say, is that it's really easy to make the decisions when it's the game's yeah. gone and actually when it's the tight decision. And, and I guess one thing that I would, from a player's point of view, there's been instances where in that moment in that game you make that decision whether it's a right or wrong one yeah. but five years down the line 
that is still remembered and yeah. that, that's where a lot of animosity between clubs can actually definitely uh, you know kind of blossom if that makes sense because because whatever happened then that's when oh, they did that they did that you know so it's actually got bigger ramifications that decision in the longer term yeah in, i found than necessarily that side of that game that that moment um, yeah, I think, I, you know, it's, it's a, just a, for me personally, I'd make that decision. Again, I'd put all four spread of cricket. And if the other captain, opposing captain, wants to go the other way, well, so be it. He'll have to sort of, yeah. again, again, probably five years down the line, whatever it is, think about it. I wish I'd done it that way. But um, it is it's, it's, it's a difficult one, as you said, depending on the game and where we're at with it. It's, it you could say heat in the moment, all of a sudden you could just think, oh, no, stuff it. He could have. Again, he could have two balls before, nicked one and hasn't walked, mm. and all of a sudden an incident happens. You think, well, hold on, he didn't walk the way before, actually, yeah. yeah. I'm sticking with that. You are, type of thing, you know. It's a, yeah, it's a tricky one. I right? guess it comes down to, I'm going to say 42 <laughs> laws here, because I've just done my level two umpires. 42 laws, is that right? Yeah. Uh, and, the and, what, the and, what, and what they tell us is the 43rd, 43rd. Is, the, yeah. is the most important one, that of common sense. Of common so sense. Yeah. How much, from an umpire's point of view, look, like, how much does that come into it in terms of an awful lot yeah an awful lot but picking up on ryan's point there where he said that you know you edge a couple of a four drop behind and you're going to net up i think when you use the common sense side of things on that as an umpire mm. if you've got a bit of empathy for the game you can see exactly where that player's coming from so you've got to allow him that little bit but there's a there's a line yeah. obviously now what my line is and what my colleagues lines are they can vary a little bit but if you use the common sense side of things, then you can control a player, bring him back in, have a little word, say, look, you know, it's all part of the game, I'm going to have you. Because the last thing is report a player for doing something stupid. You, yeah. you don't need to do that. Yeah. As regarding the competitive side of things, if I, I would not play cricket if it's not competitive. Definitely. You want it competitive, obviously. But again, there's, there's a line how far you can go to be competitive. Um, you get some players, they're more competitive than others. If they just get on with it, then nothing phases them at all. You get to know these players, and then once you know them, you know how far they can go. Mm. And then it comes into the captain then. If they start to go a little bit too far, then have a word of the captain, have a word and mm. calm the player down. I think, yeah, I think, I think for me, yeah, that's why I'm still doing it at my age, is there's the competitiveness. You know, I, I can't wait to work and you know, Family life goes on through the week. You come that Saturday. I, quite, I can't wait for that sort of the competitive nature of it. That's what I, I thoroughly enjoy on it, and it's just making sure you don't cross that line. Really, you can still go out and enjoy the the game, being competitive. It's just uh, you can still enjoy it. Yeah, yeah when it's competitive, yeah, same as an umpire. Yeah. You know, yeah. the more competitive, the better. The better yeah. And the closer yeah. the game, yeah. you you're really on your on, on your toes with it. Where does without going too deep into it, where does sledging come into that um, in terms of treading that line? Because um, that's gone around. You know, we've kind of well, sledging's been. It's always been in the game, but again, it comes down to interpretation. The, the, there's, the, there's always going to be a bit, but then how, how much? There's acceptable sledging. There's funny sledging, which you'll all have a laugh at and join in with. But then when it comes to the personal sledging, and it starts to get a bit naughty, then that's when you've got to sort of clamp down on that. You don't need that go too far. And as an umpire, sometimes we're accused of clamping down too soon and being draconian and not letting the game flow and reporting players too quickly. Mm. And then on the other side of the coin, if you leave it go too far, and once you've let it go too far, it's very it's difficult to, to pull it back, back in yeah. and you, yeah. you, you've got a job to do that. Yeah. We get accused then of losing control of the game. So again, it's the, it's it's the line, yeah. you can't win, but it's the line there. And I think the better umpires can either let it go a bit or pull it back in and get the game back on even track. But if you've got a player who's hell-bent on not being interested at all in the laws of the game or the spirit of cricket, well then, mm. You know, you can't, you can't do nothing about it, I can't do nothing about yeah. it, but then he cuts his own problems then. Like, from a, again, from a captain's point of view, or as a player, really, from, from a sledging side, I've always felt like, again, I'm quite grateful for the sledging, you know, you say the funny side of it, it's quite funny sometimes when you do hear it, when you're out there, it's for me, it's the personal, I mean, things get, it's difficult, and when do you get personal, because you could be being funny about a certain, uh, I don't know, an internal player or whatever, that he could perceive that as personal. So it is a really difficult one mm. where you call it sledging. But it's just the getting, when you get personal with someone, I don't know anything, you wouldn't, again, I always say to them, would you do it off the field? I mean, would you, some of the things Would you do it in the street? In the street, would you yeah. say it in your workplace? Would you, so why, why do you think it's okay to do it yeah. once you come on? So that's the, that's the difficulty for me when 
I'd come across it. Obviously, it's been a lot better over the years. And then, and in, and then in club cricket, you get to a point where none of us are world beaters, and you think, well, you know what, you've actually got to back it yeah. up to a point. So we've <laughs> yeah. all been there where it's yeah. backfired yeah. and you've got egg on your face. No, so, I yeah. think as well, umpires can help that because yeah. if you've got a bit of personality about you, and you, you can crack a few funny ones, yeah. and you put it in at the right time, it can really so diffuse right. the situation yeah, yeah, and, it, and it calms it down. But it's got to be timed right and you've got to say the right thing. You don't want to inflame <laughs> it to make it even worse type of thing. Yeah, okay. Okay, cool. Definitely. Um, last one before we get into, uh, into something different. I, we've kind of talked about best attributes of umpires. And again, I'll flip it. So, Spatsy, I'll come to you first. What, in, from what you've seen from an umpire's point of view, best captains in terms of best attributes you've seen from captains around the, the club circuit? What, what do they tend to have? Not necessarily playing, you know, obviously playing attributes. They but. tend to have something about them that you get on with them. You know you're going to a certain ground and you know for well, as soon as you turn up, the captain's there, he's shaking your hands, oh, you Bob, our things, blah, blah, blah. And you've got that smooth sort of transition from the car park to the changing room, then, for want of a better word. Mm. And you know then that it's going to be an easy day, a good day, and they're going to help you along. And that does help an awful lot. Other captains then, they're not, and that's, that's up to them, that's entirely their sort of product. But those type of captains, you've got to sort of nurture on a little bit. And maybe they don't want the, the close sort of how are you, this, that and the other. That's fine, there's no problem with that. Mm. But as long as it doesn't spill over onto the pitch with the rest of the players are like that, they make it awkward for us. Mm. But then you get to know the captains who you can sort of turn to if you think, hang on, this is going a bit pear shaped here, I need to have a chat to him. And he'll do something about it. Yeah, what about the way in which they kind of Man manage the game, I don't know if that's the right way to say, but in terms of how tactically, strategically, what? Well, you know, being an ex-cricketer myself, you, you look at that and you might think, well, I wouldn't bring him back on, but he is, and, and you sort of, you might have a chat in the bar after mm. and say, oh, when you brought the spinner on, I would have kept the seamer, or whatever, mm. you know, some captains you're going to have a chat that about, others will take, well, hang on, I'm the captain, you, you can't yeah. tell me what to do, well, fair enough, you know, so yeah. <laughs> you get to know who's who and what's what, but of course, what a captain does in the pitch, is entirely his decision, we, we can't get involved in anything of that yeah. nature, naturally. But um, it's good to see sometimes, you, you might think, I might think, on the same lines as the captain, think, you know, I do this now, and the captain does it. Does it? So you're <laughs> thinking, oh, well, we, we both got something right anyway. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, and right, look, we all, I, I'd be no different, you know, you take, you build your own experiences from the captains and the players you played against yeah. and with and stuff like that. What, in your mind, how is, what kind of ranks in your head in terms of kind of best attributes you've seen from maybe other captains that you've tried to put into your own practice, if that's the right way of saying it? I think it's, I know it's a pretty, pretty cliche, practice what you preach, really. I think it's, uh, from a captain's point of view, it's communication is massive. It's some of the communication that captains have with their players, and so I mean, it's really key, and so people understand their roles and what's expected of them, you know, prior to sort of um, taking the field really. I think what Bob, just touched on what Bob said there, but certain captains won't do it. And it's funny that you, I don't know, again, you said the captains have come across in my, over the years of playing, you, and what Bob says, those type of captains, you can almost see it then, the way they do it, the players sort of follow suit in, in, in that aspect, you know, which is, it's a difficult one. So you've got a responsibility from a captain's point of view to sort of lead from the front really and make sure that obviously, but um, attributes, well, I think, so I say you've got to be strong. You've got to be strong because again, when it's competitive, you've got some. You, you're trying to manage personalities, all sorts of personalities and characters in, in that change room. You know what I mean? And it's going to take someone quite strong to sort of manage it, really. And there's going to be, again, other sort of, I say maybe quieter characters or the youngsters, and you've got to be mindful of them. Um, so it's just interesting to see how they how they do it, really, on that aspect, really. Uh, up in years in Newport. Um, probably when I first come over here, I played Newport for years and again there were a lot of youngsters in the team um, and we had the likes of, again at Newport, I don't know if you mentioned the likes of Gary Woodall, how he managed sort of the youngsters which was really good for me learning and seeing how he sort of managed it and I was, I don't know, put arm around certain people and certain individuals actually needed a bollocking really, <laughs> like I say, I don't know, but yeah, uh, yeah. but no, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting really, again I've, you grow up, you learn, you come through it again. I was playing as a youngster myself, playing cricket in South Africa. Um, it, it can be extremely, like, from a behaviour point of view, and things really strict, you know, with regards to the laws of the game and how you sort of approach it. But um, growing up through school, really. what, what's one of the biggest cha challenges from yourself? Because I, I, I think it's one of the most thankless tasks trying to be a club captain in England and Wales. It's, it's oh. tough. What's what's come? What's probably the biggest challenge you find? 
I, I dread selection light, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably sat there. So, um, it's easy, again, it's easy for me, and, and that, in that instance, I pick first, you know what I mean? But as, if you look at it from a club point of view, mm-hmm. it's extremely difficult. You know, you could have one week, you've got a, you, loads of players to pick from, and then the next week you struggling, you've got the likes of your chairman trying to get him to put his kit on, you know, and get him to come just to make up the numbers. Yeah. So it's extreme. I find that quite difficult. And commitment, I find it's really, it's a strange one, really. The commitment side of things is just, um, I don't know, it's quite a difficult one, really. I, I don't know what it is in, in, say in England and Wales from a club point of view. Um, I was quite growing up in South Africa myself and being involved in cricket there. For me, if you didn't train, you, you didn't play, and, you, and no matter if you were the best player or not, you just didn't play, regardless of what it was. Um, it's difficult here. Yeah? I find, you know, numbers, and you want to be uh, sort of, uh, I don't know, competitive, and you want, want to win. It's, that's the biggest bit for me. You know, do I, is a youngster that's turned up every week? Is he training every Wednesday night, and all of a sudden, I don't know, someone's gone to a festival one week, and then all of a sudden he's expected to come yeah. straight back in. Yeah. Um, it's really, that's what I find really tough as a captain, you know, trying to manage it. But again, I think it's important as a captain, you're good communicator, able to communicate these things, you know. If, if, that's the difficult thing really for me as a player wise. Really. I think you're touching on man management there, yeah, which, definitely. you know, captains, you've got it. You, you know the players you put an arm around, you know the ones you've got to give a rocket to. Yeah. I think it's safe from Ampo's perspective, is that you get to know the players, you can have a little flippant remark at and he'll take notice. The other one you've got to be a bit more serious with. I'm not saying put the arm around, you can't do that obviously. Yeah. But you can sort of yeah. come around a little chat and why and you know, and that's your man management skill that comes into it. Yeah. And some can do it the same as captain, some are better than others at it. Well, you said you won't be the yeah. only captain in that boat. I yeah. think that's probably I think you've just described pretty much every captain's yeah. kind of the, the nightmare and the challenge you get around that and it's you know, that's that's a really difficult one I think. As you go through the week, it never ends sometimes, the dropouts and then you can well, pick you can't your team. Well, you've sometimes, yeah. so, but... Um, I think it's, it's also another, probably, we, it's, I say more particular probably for the Premier League is, and it's absolutely fantastic having the player allocation, which I think is one of the best things to happen. It's brilliant to have Glamorgan players come in on the weekends and stuff, but that's a bit tricky too, you know, waiting for the allocation to come through and picking someone, and it's having man management, be able to explain to somebody why they've been left out, but it's, again, it comes to, again, man management's important there, and able to communicate that to the player as to why, unfortunately, he's played every week, he's been left out this week, it's, it's a difficult one, really. You touched on the Glamorgan players mm-hmm. there, and it's the same for the umpires. Once we know that, say, both sides got their two Glamorgan <laughs> players playing, it's a much, oh, hello. You look forward to it even more then, yeah. because you've got the two Glamorgan boys playing. And I, I've got to say that over the years I've umpired in the Premier League and Glamorgan players have played, there's never been a problem with any of them. Mm. They're really, really proper professionals. They come down, they do their bit, they do their drills, they come on the pitch. Yeah. They respect, if anything, they respect the umpires more than the club players do. Yeah. You know, which I think is great for players to see that. Which is fantastic. Yeah, role model. And again, they yeah. bring competitiveness. They look, oh, bring competitiveness. They're yeah. Extremely competitive. Yeah. But it's always yeah. good to see as a player or youngster amongst them, Actually, that's how you toe the line, but mm. still be competitive. Mm. But there's a certain way to behave, and I think it's, I think it's been brilliant. Yeah, yeah. It's been brilliant. Good idea. Um, cool. Well, well, look, I think we could probably end up chewing the fat for quite a while here if uh, if, we, <laughs> if we carry on, and we'll we'll end up going into the middle of the night. So um, we're going to go to a slightly different. We haven't done this before, so we're going to go. If you've got a true or false next to you, if you pick them up, we've just got a couple of. Um, Statements, I think, is probably the most accurate way of saying it. So, don't think long and hard. Don't look at each yeah. other. Just, just hold up so the camera can see. And obviously, you know, everybody watching, um, just, just kind of hold up what, what comes to mind first up. So, we'll, we've got kind of six or seven, and, and if any form uh, any any discussion, then we can we can go into them. So, um, I'll start with uh, breaches of league discipline are on the increase. True or false? Oh, no, that's good to see. That's yeah, good yeah. to see. Good. Uh, I think we've kind of touched on this. Maybe we've not. Captains are objective when marking umpires post game. True or false? Oh, interesting. Okay, let's unpack that one a little bit. So that kind of touches on what we've we've kind of said anyway. Um, Spatsy, do you want to do you want to just quickly <laughs> explain that one? How long have we got? <laughs> You said 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Um, no, what we tend to find, going back to decisions and what have you, you, you don't have a 600 ball as an umpire, yeah. you might make one mistake. It might not be. It might be 
deemed as a mistake by the captain or a player. He goes back to the captain and says, I get the edge on that one. And he didn't. And then when the marks come through, they mark you a five for decision making. You made one, maybe, maybe one wrong decision. Yeah. And they mark you down. That's not wrong. And Ryan touched on it earlier on, a batsman. He How come back for three weeks. <laughs> have 50, 60, 70 on the, on the trot. Then the next week, bang, out first ball. Is he a bad player? Yeah. No, he's just got three fifties. We get about three very good games. Yeah. We might have made a, a, a bad decision, yeah. but you mark down. And, and how does that impact you throughout the season? And if you obviously get a bad mark one game, say you haven't made a bad decision, well, and it's just I because someone thinks think you have. Where it'll impact is that the way we work it on the Premier League, we got a panel of Division One umpires and a panel of Division Two. Yeah. Now the Division Two boys are looking to go up. The Division One boys are looking to stay on there. Right, okay. They get a few bad marks off captains which puts them down in the lower half or the lower two or three of that, they could very well be in Division 2 next year. Okay. And they shouldn't be there because they aren't good no. enough. But it's not just only captain's marks that does that, but that does go a long way. It, it? So it's important for the captains to look at it you know, objectively and mark umpires accordingly on the six categories on that actual day. And I just go, oh, all tens or all eights. There's no need it's, to you've got to mark it. You can look at the marks and work oh, out who's won the game. Yeah, 100%. I get, I get the, I get the marks sent to me. Yeah. And I can look looking at the scores, I can look at the marks, yeah. and I would say out of the, the 20, um, 10 games in the Premier League every Saturday, at least four, eight of them, you can look at the marks and they've lost, they've yeah. won. Yeah. The other two might be a little bit different. But no, it, you okay. can generally tell on that. They blame the umpire rather than the player's performances yeah. on the day. On that one result there. Uh, yeah. So if, that's, if, that's, one incident, yeah. if this episode helps at all, captains, uh, without, without trying to preach too much, then <laughs> the uh, let's, let's see what happens. Yeah, let's uh, be objective our, our in your marking. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah, we've kind of touched on this, but we're going to go, most instances of sledging that you hear on the pitch are absolutely fine. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's just recognising when, when that line's yeah. when that line's being crossed. Cool. Uh, oh, this is an interesting one. Um, and let's not unpack this one too yeah. much, but man cadding is a perfectly legitimate mode of dismissal. True or false? Ooh, okay. So Spatsy so you've gone true, sorry there. Yeah. Ryan's Ryan's gone false. I think I think I'm you going spirit cricket here. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's just yeah. It's I, don't, just I don't think we need to unpack that. I think no. people probably realise yeah, no. the, the the message behind that. I'm going to put my newly acquired level two head on. It is actually a legitimate mode of dismissal, isn't it? Well, it is. Yeah. 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 Um, if you leave the crease before the bowler's got to that area of his bowling action. Yeah. He can turn back and run you up. Oh, it happened it's, in the 19s World Cup recently. I, I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I I, I you know, I think it's against the spirit of cricket. But as an umpire, if it happened to me in my first game of the season and, and the bowler appeals for it, you've got to get the batsman out. Yeah. But you saw we saw the opposite. Of that. I think I think the the World Cup, the Women's World Cup recently. I think South Africa, England. But again, as a Brent might have warned the, the batter, and in the following, literally the following innings, the South African bowler has gone and warned mm. the English player. It is, it's, um, but from an umpire's point of view, I see why for me it had to be that's it's the a rule decision. For your, yeah. for, otherwise, you're hiding <laughs> Whether we agree or not, yeah. you've got to make a decision. You've got to make a decision. So, it, so it, is, yeah. it is true that it's a perfectly legitimate mode of dismissal. Yeah. I, think, I think there will be a very divided camp. Uh, I don't know how divided, probably not that divided actually, but no. I think there's, the, there's probably the old traditional spirit of cricket somewhere yeah. in there as well. Um, but, but that's. I thought I, I thought that one might divide opinion, which is which is good. Um, last one. Let's go. You need to have played the game to a high level to umpire effectively. True or false? <laughs> In the middle. Can I go In the middle. No, you're not allowed to do that. You're, you can't sit on the fence. Well, we will discuss it. I'll, I'll say true. Okay. There's a back really to this. For me, a high, high level though, but false. Yeah. Okay, <coughs> I guess club cricket. Yeah, club cricket. Yeah. What what we tend to find is that the umpires who have played the game generally make the better umpires. Not always the case. You always get one or two coming through. Dean Price is a perfect example. Dean never played uh, club cricket. He is on the minor counties. Mm. So there's that quashes the argument to an extent. But generally. I think I'm right in saying the number of captains and players I've spoken to, if they know you've played the game, they've got a lot more sort of confidence in you. Whereas the ones who haven't played the game, they've got to build up from scratch, basically. They might love cricket, they never played it. And they can, no they, they can, make, they can yeah. make good umpires, and I'm not going to dispute that. Mm. And some old boys certainly are. But I think if you've played the game, 
it really, really helps when you take that first yeah. step onto the onto the pitch, isn't it? Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah, you get yeah, yeah, when it falls. Yeah, for me, again, you're using any sport, I suppose, maybe rugby, football. Again, not the best of players. Again, don't always make the best managers or coaches. So it, it is. A, it's a. It's a really. As I say, it doesn't. It's not hard and you know yes oh, and yeah. no. Mm. It's mostly yes, but mm, there are exceptions to yeah. it where people have done uh, have done pretty well. Mm. First class umpires. Not all first class umpires have played yeah. first class cricket. Yeah. And again, for most, it's like a refereeing side of things. You know, in other sports, rugby again, and football, like you some really young referees that haven't played much of a high level but they start the referee again we got these the umpires now uh, the youngsters learning yeah, umpire. yeah. yeah, yeah. so it's um yeah i don't know it's a bit, but i suppose we can go it's on about one. it yeah. yeah it's an interesting one okay cool um i've got three more well no two more questions for you i think um and these were sent in actually so um when we have future episodes again we always ask for questions to come in so um if you have any on the back of this episode by all means feel free to send them in and uh, when we get episode three underway in the next couple of months, then then, then do so again. Um, which law? This is one for both of you, really. Which law or reg would you most like to see changed, and why? This is in cricket in general, rather than necessarily in, in South like South Wales League or North Wales League or, or anywhere. There's been so many changes. Th- there's none this year. There's been so yeah. many changes the last couple of years. I don't think they can change anymore. <laughs> no. you know, they might find one if or two. If it was down to you, if you wanted to make a, oh. a statement change, what, what would it be? I would try and make the front foot no ball easier to administrate than what it is at the moment okay. by bringing the front foot behind the line rather than allowing the heel to touch or sorry part of the heel behind the line if that could be possible because it is so quick these days with the quick bowlers it does give you that little bit more sort of looking time rather than keeping looking down because they get in right right close with the heel. And you've got the bit where if they're, they're over, but they're on over the line. Yeah, as long as the heel is up in the air and it's behind the line, but up in the air, that's fine. But, yeah. And then another one, then we get some bowlers, they come in and the back foot somehow covers the front foot and you can't see the front foot landing. It does yeah. happen occasionally. Yeah. That's a night. Oh, you can't help that. That's okay. where a bowl of bowls. That's, that's an but interesting one, really, because it is quite, I suppose, it is like yeah. that, kind of, I suppose, what when you're you, trying to. What would you do? <sighs> what, would, what would you introduce or change? Uh, I don't know. From, I don't know. Really. Again, there's been so many changes over the the last few years. Um, none really. Yeah, that does not really. I think, I'd go, I think I'd go blanket super over in, on the back yeah. of the World Cup. I think I'd go no <laughs> ties. I think I'd go super yeah. over full stop yeah. in under eleven club cricket and whatever. I'd go blanket super. Over. I tell you, when they brought, they have brought in which we as umpires find very very helpful is the wide guidelines oh yeah out the blue lines the blue that? lines yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, especially outside the offside like leg side is wide full stop yeah. but offside oh that is such a yeah. good guide for us but it's, it's a great guide but also can be a little bit more at the umpire's discretion I suppose what you how far is he it's up to that individual umpire I suppose yeah. it makes that yeah. call now, I suppose. Yeah. but you, I think that helps massively you've yeah. touched on my next one which is the yeah. best one that's been introduced yeah. sorry you've, you've, uh, you've jumped ahead you, we were talking <laughs> about one before before we started um, shooting best, best law for the and this is ironic coming from you as a scene bowler yeah um, which one was it again? well I think we're talking about the bumpers especially in the Premier League has been changed I think to uh, two and over I think it is that and allowed two two and over way before and, and I think some leagues you can pretty much bowl you're all over six balls and it's, I just don't see how that's sort of I don't know. Conducive yeah. to <laughs> it's a difficult one. We, we saw it. Well, we've seen that. So last year, it's just difficult. It's really difficult, really. And I think that's great. That I think two balls and over. It's, uh, especially yeah. club cricket. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think that's important, really, uh, from that point of view. Again, the, the wide thing's been great. I think that's really that's helped massively. I think with the leg side, right? Bowlers know, batsmen know, yeah. we know that if it's good, it's wide. There's and there's no, no argument yeah, about that. No yeah. And then the wide guide, all right, sometimes the bowlers might think it didn't quite go over the line until it was, you know, they're going to argue this. It's a good guide for us. It's a very, very good yeah. guide. The history was, was, I think, was the last year, I changed, I might have been wrong here, but it was the, the full task, like, you included the spinners, wasn't it? I'm thinking, well, yeah. Well, you bought yeah. the spinner, they got the yips first, too, you could be off. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? That's, it's um, got to be dangerous now. Yeah. Not just a full toss. Where, where Two yards before, wide, but it was yeah. before, yeah. Yeah. which well, was crazy. The, it was crazy. <coughs> and I you know, have that on a ball, which it is a lot in Wales, that's, yeah. you would be dead right. You could have a shot at first, and you're off, which is tough. Yeah, definitely. So that's obviously changed now too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As long as it's not, if it's dangerous, it's yeah. sort of way, but uh, you know, too. 
Um, okay, we could yeah we could unpack the war book and go go properly to town, but we at the risk of making half our audience fall asleep, I, I, I don't think we'll, I don't think we'll go down that route. Um, but look, that's look, for now, guys. That's 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 great. Thank you very much for your for your input. Um, wish you a very good season. You're at Lords, I believe, with us in April. I am April. indeed. I am indeed. April twenty first. Um, so I hope, I hope that's a. a I hope the rain experience. stops. And, yeah, uh, yeah hopefully right. it doesn't rain for that one. Um, and yeah, you, you Ryan Mumbles have a have a good season with you good, guys. Yeah. I, I think we'll play against each other at some point. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that'll be good. No sledging there. At all. <laughs> um, so yeah, all the best, guys. Brilliant. And, and take it easy. Yeah, so, yeah. Thank, thank you, you very much. Cheers.